Good morning and welcome to the CEO podcast. Today we are sponsored by United Healthcare Group. Washington hospitality employees can enroll in individual and family health plans until January 15th. I'm going to drop a link into the chat so you can get some more information on that. And if you are listening to this after the fact, we have a link in the description below. Just a reminder, we are recording this, so if folks miss, they can watch it later this week. Today, Washington Hospitality President and CEO Anthony Antone is joined by our State Government Affairs Director, Julia Gordon. They're going to talk about the upcoming 2022 legislative session that starts on Monday. And if you have any questions for them, drop them into the Q&A at the bottom of your Zoom screen. And with that, I will turn this over to Anthony. Good morning, Anthony. Good morning, uh, Lisa and, and Julia. Thanks for joining us. Excited to have everything going today. It's been a while since we've done our little trivia thing. So uh, when I'm trying to get settled in the hospitality, I'd love to listen to the theme from Cheers. Um, but I'll take anyone to lunch who can tell me who sang the, the theme from Cheers. Does anyone know that? So put that in the chat while we're waiting for people to log in here for the first minute and the first one to put that in there, I will take to lunch. So I've enjoyed uh, taking the different members to lunch that have answered the trivia questions along the way. Because sometimes you just want to go. <laughs> that being said, we are a minute in. Um, and I know many people would be listening to this uh, in their car or later. Um, so we try to keep this podcast to around 20 to 30 minutes um, as we've learned how to do these things. Uh, in looking back in December, um, let me start with good news because then we're going to talk about Omicron. Um, hopefully everyone got their work safe checks or you probably remember them as retro checks over the holidays. So um, if you didn't check with your accountant and uh, um, we will get that in. Um, but uh, it was great. We had to work really hard for uh, to get everyone our retro checks this year it was a big challenge. Um, with our workforce and other things going on um, and the way people were calculating uh, claims during all this. So the fact that we were able to get refunds to the, the vast majority of our members, we're pretty excited about. Um, I did see the answer get put in chat. I think that was Brian Zog who got it in first. Brian, you are correct. Gary Portnoy, which honestly, name another song he ever wrote and I, I would be impressed, but I love One Hit Wonder, so we'll, we'll take that. Um, the other thing we should probably bring everyone up to speed on, um, and again, if you're listening to your car, don't worry. I'm just using these screens to uh, um, keep myself aligned. Uh, Omicron obviously was here and it took off on us. Um, right before Omicron was announced and um, was going strong, um, we were averaging about 1,400 cases a day. Um, and look at where we are now. Um, the last seven days have all been higher than uh, any other record day we had before Omicron. So we are really skyrocketing in the number of cases. Now, as I told you in the, um, or as I mentioned in the um, uh, December podcast, cases and Omicron, I'm not, I'm not as concerned with as I am for hospitalizations. Um, and those really, for me, are gonna be what's gonna drive public policy and if the governors or, or uh, county execs or health department people um, try to do additional regulations, hospitalizations would be the one I would keep my eye on. And unfortunately, those are starting to take off on us. You can look at, uh, we're now up to 8.5 um, on average, uh, there's uh, hospitalizations per day uh, per 100,000. But the, the larger concern is if you're looking online, um, and I'll tell you about this if you're driving, that number is projected to almost double um, here in the next week. So that would really put a strain on the hospital system. So uh, there's no uh, regulations or anything to be aware of today, but if projections and this keep going really strong um, later in the month, we, we could have some concerns. So we're gonna keep an eye on this. Um, we're going to continue to talk to all the regulators and health department folks, um, because, again, I believe that hospitalizations are probably going to drive change. Um, uh, 
Uh, I want to, I did talk to the uh, CEO of the hospital association yesterday and I, and I told her we we're going to have our podcast today and what should our members know? Um, one, she said they're, they're in bad shape now, but they're not as in bad shape as we wa- were in the winter. Um, but she's really, really concerned where this curve going. And, and so um, if we're communicating to the public through our own channels or to our employees, please don't go to the ER unless the doctor directs you to do so. So if you have COVID, don't run to the ER, talk to your consulting nurse, other folks. They're trying to manage the workloads in ER. The other thing she mentioned to me is ditch the cloth mask and go to the disposable um, surgical masks or the, uh, I always get the number wrong. Julia, is it R, what's the the number? AN95. That one. Uh, (laughs) Go to that mask. Um, The cloth masks are just barely above not doing anything with Omicron. It's not the same effect as we've seen with Delta and prior uh, measurements. So if you've bought cloth masks for your team, um, we'll go from there. We did talk to the governor's office this morning, um, and we believe that a lot of masks are gonna be made available to different emergency systems um, and health departments. So later in this week, uh, we hope to be getting information out to you locally um, and work with your local health departments uh, to get you masks if you need those surgical or other masks um, on your team. Her other uh, request, to us as an industry and to get word out to our employees is uh, not only get vaxxed, but get boosted. Um, The number is still dominantly the unvaxxed um, that are ending up in the hospital. Um, But even more so the, the, the the, in addition to the unboosted for those who are vaxxed. So she'd encourage those things. So get vaxxed and boosted, encourage that. We all have been ditch the cloth mask and go to surgical and communicate to your team that before running the ER, talk to a doctor first so they can manage their ER. That's where her requests are of us. Julia, you've been around some of these conversations I had and giving the membership an update on Omicron and what we know. Is there anything I goofed or missed that you would hope to correct or add? No, Anthony, I think you're spot on. I heard the exact same things you did in that meeting. Uh, I would also, uh, I think it might be critical information to share that we're uh, maybe two weeks into this wave uh, and project it to be three to five more weeks, uh, maybe a little bit longer, but we're we're still at the beginning of this uptick. So uh, measures that we can take now will be helpful getting us through. No, I think that's a, that's a great reminder. Um, and I, I would encourage everyone who's watching this and thinking strategically, reset everything we know. I, it, yes, it's COVID, but Omicron is just way different than Delta or the original strain that we dealt with. Um, and uh, I was talking to a health official who was getting briefed um, by some experts. And the expert said, I could take wild guesses, all these questions you're asking me in the different health departments, but this is three weeks old. We don't know. We have informed guesses, but Omicron relatively is new. So we are only in the Washington, we're about three weeks into this thing. And a wave typically lasts, uh, we're guessing eight to to 12 weeks. So um, we got a lot to learn here um, with basically this new strain and the way it's taking off. Having had this version myself, um, I think the good news is I've been vaxxed and boosted and I was basically sick for one day. So um, I was encouraged that I got over it that quickly um, and my family did as well. That's actually not what we promoted everyone to be here today. What we talked about was getting ready for session. And Julia, your absolutely most insane time, insane time of year starts next week um, with the legislature where you, you say, you hug your daughter and you say, I'll spend time with you in a couple months and, and we go from here. So um, give us an overview. The legislative session is going to start next week. Uh, give us a sense, just big picture of what this legislature's structure is going to be, what it's going to feel like, what the overall legislative feeling is going to be. Yeah. Uh, so first up, it's a 60 day short, supposed to be short legislative session. 
The primary function um, this year for a short session is the legislature to come in and make small supplemental changes to the two-year budget that they passed last year. Uh, however, lawmakers are certainly able and welcome to introduce legislation on any policy topic that they choose. Uh, however, House and Senate leadership have asked their caucuses to limit the number of bills uh, that they introduce. Uh, and so we are hopeful that those <laughs> guidelines will be followed, although uh, they certainly there, there's no law that prevents that. So we'll probably see a significant number of policy bills outside of budget related items. Uh, there's a couple of issues the legislature has already identified that they need to work on um, first. And uh, I'm sure you've all heard a lot of conversation around this is the long term care act. Uh, so there has been a couple of there have been a couple of bills that have been pre-filed already to deal with that. Uh, there's been one that will actually delay um, legally delay the payments uh, that are uh, supposedly due come April. I know there's a lot of stuff up in the air. That item has been sort of earmarked for early action. They hope to accomplish that in the first uh, couple of weeks of session. So employers will know with uh, legal certainty whether or not they should be collecting those premiums from employees. We also know that um, there may need to be tweaks to police reform bills that were passed last year. And uh, then of course, dealing with COVID response. So those are sort of the, the big issue items uh, that the legislature has already identified that they're going to work on. In addition to that, our team will have a couple of hospitality specific uh, pieces of legislation that we will be either working on or, or trying to um, prevent from moving forward in the process. The first is dealing with relief related to hotels that were impacted by the eviction moratorium. Um, we did issue a survey to get a little bit better detail on the amount and cost um, to hotels that were impacted by that. So thank you very much for uh, giving us that information if you participate in that survey. But from that, we were able to determine um, a dollar amount we think needs to be um, uh, uh, requested in order to provide relief to, to members who are impacted. Uh, there's also uh, an amount of federal dollars that, that have been unspent, and we will be investigating avenues to provide additional industry relief there. And then, um, unfortunately, again, it looks like lodging tax is going to be under attack. Um, there has been a bill that's been pre-filed that would uh, provide uh, or essentially remove 33% of the special excise tax on lodging that um, is legislatively required to go to tourism will be redirected uh, to be spent on affordable housing. Um, again, we have expressed concern about uh, removing those really critical tourism dollars from the industry that's been the most impacted by COVID-19, and so we'll continue um, that fight to reserve those dollars um, where they're intended to go. So that's sort of a real quick overview. I'm happy to go into more detail on anything. So ask away, Anthony. <laughs> um, well, let's, let's break that down a little bit. Um, if uh, um, the overall uh, sense for the industry of some of the bigger issues, what I heard you say is um, really protecting the industry from tourism dollars to any bad legislation that would, would occur um, and um, work on things like LTC and other things to make sure that they're the best they can be for the industry. Is that a decent view for kind of the big picture affecting every member of this call and every member? Absolutely. We are still very much in recovery despite the fact that capacity restrictions have ended uh, our industry is very much in recovery and we need to continue to, to remind the, the legislature and lawmakers that we still are in need of support. As far as relief efforts, what I heard you say is we've got a very specific package gonna, that you're working on now. So details to come out later uh, to help lodging who had to uh, deal with the eviction moratorium. Um, do you sense if, if we're gonna go back into Omicron, there's gonna be any other relief packages or there's any other outside of lodging, um, relief efforts out of this session or because it's 60 days and they did so much work 
last session that maybe not? Yeah, and I, that's a good question because it's important to remind folks that the bulk of the financial relief uh, has been federal, right? So the, um, the PPP, the RRF has, have been federal relief programs. Even what the state has been able to do through their small business grants has been through federal funding. Um, the state actually has a constitutional prohibition on gifting public funds, uh, which essentially would be um, what the, the federal programs on a state level. Um, so we have a constitutional amendment that prohibits the state from doing that. So everything uh, kind of financially related needs to be done with federal funds. Uh, and so we continue to work with both AH and LA as well as the National Restaurant Association on uh, replenishing the RRF, the Save Hotel Jobs Act. Um, so I think the bulk of that federal um, financial funding is federal and we focus on kind of policy um, support here at the state level uh, that can help our folks through recovery. Okay. Um, what did we learn on unemployment? So. Uh... Last year, um, we were the industry that got absolutely hammered on the unemployment insurance end. Um, we passed regulation that honestly was our best guess of how to protect the industry. How did that play out? Is there going to be needed to be another UI bill this year? Um, did it work? Yeah. Um, so rate notices were sent out at the end of the month, uh, right around the week of Christmas. So check your mailboxes for your new um, 2022 rates. We were able to pass two pieces of legislation last year. Um, the first, again, was the first uh, item the legislature acted on, which provided immediate relief for 2021 rates. Um, and then we also were able to work one of the last bills that they passed last year was dealing with 2022 rates. So there's a couple of things and, and Anthony, you know, I'll, we can both go into great detail on unemployment insurance because we're weird nerds like that. But <laughs> essentially, um, your rates have already been adjusted. So we were able to pass $500 million dollars. Uh, essentially, what the proposal did was it capped the increase for employers in the hospitality industry. There were a number of different tiers um, where they prioritized the industries that were most impacted. The hospitality was identified in the, the top two tiers. Um, so we received the, the most amount of relief, the largest amount of relief. Uh, it capped the increase to no more than three um, rate class increases for members. And then the other thing that um, the, the suite of bills did was it capped the social, um, the social cost factor. Um, so you've got the, the experience rate piece and then also the social cost factor that was scheduled to be um, three times, I think, what we were able to cap it at. So um, the rates have already been adjusted and um, very pleased on, on being able to support, continue to support the industry. The legislature heard um, all of our um, cries for help last year and uh, um, that should be really helpful for employers for 2022. Okay. So uh, let's recapping the UI conversation. And then I would love, if you have questions for us of what to expect for a session um, on anything I, I talked about at Omicron or other, uh, start getting them in the chat. And, um, and we'll go from there. But to recap your UI conversation is members should have received their UI rates over the Christmas break. If they were swamped, hopefully because of good business and other stuff, go back and look at what you got. But it should be good news compared to the fear that we had. And the it relief is, package. It will, an, it will be an increase for all employers, but it is good okay. news in the fact that it's already significantly mitigated. Good. So, and, and the, the big news is there probably won't be a big UI package this session because the one that you spearheaded last year worked and it, and it had the desire effect and it provided a couple hundred million in um, what would have been new taxes on our industry. Correct. Awesome. Well, great job on that. And that is good news. Um, with that, uh, Julia, anything else on session before we open it up for questions? Anything that I cut off or we didn't get to get into? Yeah. 
I saved the most important for last, and that is hill climb. <laughs> so um, we have had a couple of we're you know moving pieces here uh, with the legislature. A couple of announcements in the last week. The House um, will be completely virtual uh, this well, at least for the first few weeks of session. The Senate announced similarly that they're going to um, restrict public access and uh, conduct their work virtually as well, which is OK. We did um, we did very well in that type of environment last year because of the level of engagement and support from our members, from the industry, from the public. So um, this is an environment we're comfortable, we're ready to, to do work and accomplish what we need to this year. But we do need your participation in our annual hill climb event. Um, Lisa has popped the registration link into the chat. A couple of exciting things this year as we move to um, uh, to virtual event. I think maybe it was uh, something we were trying to avoid last year, but we have now embraced this. Uh, it does allow a number of a uh, significant uh, increase in number of uh, members to participate because you can do it from wherever you are. So we'll have a virtual briefing. It'll be on Monday, January 31st. You can participate live or you can download that at your convenience. And then we also are bringing back meetings with lawmakers this year, uh, which should be a lot easier for our members to participate in as well, because those will be remote. So we will schedule individual meetings with members in their district and their lawmaker. And uh, that will take place over the course of the full week, January 31st through February 4th. Uh, and we are looking forward to um, to a really good event, embracing the virtual nature uh, of the legislature this year. Awesome. Well, I hope everyone uh, can join that. And if they want to participate, um, they can register right there and what's 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 uh, posted on the screen. So if you're if you're driving, um, you can always email Lisa um, and she will respond to you with links or other information, Lisa. If they're driving and they're like, hey, I want to get that information, what, where, where can they email? Podcast at wahospitality.org. Great. Well, let's open it up for questions. Julia, that was a great recap, and thanks for all your hard work. Um, any questions from the members on Omicron, the upcoming legislative session, um, workforce shortage, or otherwise? And while that's uh, getting posted, um, I didn't update um, uh, the, the membership on employment numbers. Um, we are still running about 45,000 employees um, down uh, from where we were in normal timeframes. Uh, I talked to some employment experts um, on Monday, um, the, what is that, the third of the month. They're anticipating the announced UI rates uh, that will get released later to be um, unemployment rate, not UI rate, unemployment rate, to be the lowest in Washington state's history. Meaning everyone is working um, and, and off the system that's not. There's also a mass retirement continuing to go on as people are deciding to go ahead and fully retire. Um, and so, we're going to be in this, as I keep telling everyone, for a few years. Um, this is not going to be a COVID-related thing. There are not any workers sitting on you on uh, unemployment anymore. Um, there's a ton of retirements going on. So um, while we have typically the industry has a slower January, um, use this time to be strategic and really think through what your workforce, your needs, your service is going to look like for the next few years. With that, Lisa, I've also, uh, we, we're doing a leadership podcast to think about how to lead differently in these times. Can you add the Northwest Leadership Podcast? Because we had another uh, podcast released, I believe, in December, correct? Correct. And um, you can also find it wherever you get your podcasts. And this one, uh, I believe our guests were uh, Lane Haas from Anthony's Home. No, which was, which was this podcast? This was Steve from... Ethan Stoll and Jennifer from Columbia Columbia Hospitality right. in in Oregon, Cannon Beach. 
That's right. Um, so Columbia Hospitality and Ethan Stowe Restaurants um, brought forward um, a lot of ideas on how to lead differently. I do see that we got a couple questions in, so let's get to those. And when we've answered those questions, uh, uh, we will end our podcast and let everyone get back to January. So Lisa, what are the questions we've got going on? We have, um, when are we going to have in-person events next? I believe with the Hospitality Association. Um, Brian, was that for the association or for uh, more leeway on what the industry can provide? Both. Both. Um, the association, as far as in-person events, um, we're still st short the staff we had when we adjusted. And so we're um, probably not looking at any immediate um, in-person um, events. Um, our next one would, would have been Hill Climb. And, and Julia just gave you the brief on what that's uh, going to, to look like this year and be virtual. Our next in-person event probably would have been our, our golf tournament. Um, and uh, uh, that right now will be probably addressed where we're at in spring. So those are probably where those those are at at this time. Um, and we will assess as this progresses. Uh, but it, there'll be both the ability to uh, to have them as an association and the ability for staffing, just probably like with you as well and what you're dealing with with your own business. Julia, what remaining restrictions are there on um, those who do catering and in-person events? What are the remaining restrictions? Do you know them off the top of your head? Yeah, so there are there are vaccine requirement restrictions for large events, and then we've got a couple of local vaccine requirement. But beyond that, um, there are the uh, the travel advisory has been rescinded, uh, and the uh, uh, restriction on large events has also been lifted. Um, so that's that's the world we're living in right now. And again watching very closely the Omicron variant and what um, mitigation efforts there uh, might be discussed. Yeah. So I think we, we have what we have now for a while with, again, as we open with the next two weeks, we'll determine if we can hold on to what we've got um, uh, based on where hospitalizations probably go. Lisa, what other questions might've been in there? Um, the only other one is how can we know what our employment need is going to look like two or three years from now? Um, well, let's talk about two things. Let's talk about bodies available and then let's talk about need. Uh, so, um, in talking about bodies available, um, that one, we can have a fairly good sense of, um, both from an economic, uh, projection standpoint and the number of retirements we've seen and, 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 and otherwise. If you've been following my state of the industry um, speeches for the past, uh, uh, since about 2015, we have been projecting this workforce um, shortage um, uh, for, for about five to six years. We didn't expect COVID to compound it the way it did, obviously, and it hit this hard all at once. Um, uh, but the generation that retiring is simply a lot bigger they delayed their retirement for a while. And when the retirement boom, there's just not enough people coming into the system to replace what we've been losing. Um, in addition, um, a lot of the other economic reports just talk about the availability of bodies, people's approach to work and that. What the economy is gonna look like, uh, I think is, is a really good question. We can just go with what we assume and, and some normal times. But if the economy, takes a radical change in its dynamic, that would obviously impact that. And it's fair to say that's an unknown to be sure. Um, generally speaking, the, the economic is good, but it could change on a dime. Uh, next question, Lisa. Yeah, will the OSHA weekly testing be pushed back past February? Testing in more remote areas is still very challenging. Great question. Um, we will. I will pick up the question on remote testing um, in some calls this week. So let me find out about remote testing. I do know there's a plan for the Puget Sound and the I-5 corridor. That doesn't help you if you're not in those things. I understand that. Um, but there is uh, hope for better testing and more testing available. Um, and watch for some announcements later this week. That being said, mm -hmm. um, the OSHA uh, case is going to be heard this Friday and Supreme Court experts are expecting some kind of announcement 
next week. Um, and so if the predictions follow, uh, watch for an email from us and our national organizations next week uh, talking about exactly what the requirements are moving forward. All right, the last question we have is, where can I read more about the lodging tax change to support affordable housing? Julia? Well, a, a couple, yeah, you can join our government affairs committee. It's open and available to any member. Um, I'll pop in Jordan's email address, the bottom if you wanna be added to that or are not. Um, we also will be, Talking about this on the Government Affairs Committee, we send out a weekly uh, newsletter during session on Fridays. So uh, the legislative weekly will start hitting your mailbox on Fridays where we will talk about the progression of, or not of that piece of legislation. All right, and that's all the questions we have. Well, almost exactly on time. Everyone, um, I hope you get a chance to catch your breath after the holidays. Um, I hope we all are hearing good news by the time we get next. Um, Brian, I look forward to having lunch with you sometime this month uh, for pulling uh, Gary Portnoy out of your uh, internet search. Um, and uh, everyone have a good one. It's an honor to serve you.